Hello friends, hola amigos. Today I'm going to speak a little bit about the daytime running lights, but not on the front, but, but in the back. Welcome to a new video. So guys, as you know, the Qashqai doesn't have daytime running lights in the back. Uh, not this model, not even the newest model. Only high-end cars and uh, Scandinavian cars do have daytime running lights in the back. Uh, personally, I think it is safe and uh, it looks quite classy. The ID came from the Dutch Qashqai forum, from uh, the member Brandwe who asked if it were possible to um, have daytime running lights in the back. The short answer was no, but of course there's a possibility. So together with uh, some other members, Nissan Duelmonter, who is a Nissan mechanic for over many years, and my friend Duncho and uh, my friend Tigrimang, it is the first uh, I ever heard of. I don't think, beside of uh, Tigrimang, anyone else has this option yet. First of all, we are want to going to use the original lights. But the strange thing on the Qashqai is the lights are separated in two parts. You have the body side and you have the tail side. That means two cablings per side. So there is a cabling, there is a cabling, there is a cabling, and there is a cabling. To make it even more complicated, they don't all join up on the same place. So if you want to use the whole light unit, you should look for a solution. So there are two solutions to um, approach this project. I will explain you both. As Tigerman only uses the tail lights for uh, daytime running lights, and when the headlights turn on, his body tail lights will turn on as well, as you can see in this video. The other approach that I am going to use is that the complete light unit with the typical light signature of the Qashqai is used all the time. Second thing I'm going to add as well is a switch in order to overrule the daytime running light. So fans of this channel know that I installed a toggle switch uh, lately. I didn't thought for what uh, function I was installing it. Now is the time to reveal. So let's remove this little tape and there you go there is my DRL switch we really dove into the cabling harness schemas and um, the wiring seams as well and uh, well, we had some hard time to figure out which cabling uh, ends where to what, what kind of connector and how to join everything up one of the very first ideas was to use some kind of aftermarket uh, controller like this one I had it for uh, I think only two and a half euros on Aliexpress as always the principle is quite simple you wire it up to a 2 volt uh, source and the ground of course the other cabling is going to the tail light the other cabling is going to the uh, turn indicator and the other one is going to the ground as well and there is even a little fuse holder with fuse I uh, already uh, used the fuse and when this one is powered it will power your tail light when you shut down the power source this little module will make that your tail light will stay live for about uh, 15 seconds so quite a nice solution um, if you wire the turn light as well the tail light will uh, go off when you indicate but to install this one you still need to find a solution to wire up all the cabling Tigerman uh, figured out if he could install this little module directly in the uh, trunk wired up to the wiper motor but not a chance 
the wiper motor only generates uh, 9 volts so not enough to power the um, module itself so that wasn't the solution and for that goes this um, module was quite overworkless so we followed the cabling into the front to see where it comes out and um, here is uh, where I'm going to separate both projects so project one the approach of Tigramang with only the tail lights uh, lighted as DRL you should have a power source in the front wire all the way to, to the back following all the way down here down here you put the cabling to the trunk behind the trunk liner and you have to go up to here and just here behind the roof liner when you open it up you can enter this little cable protector and get your wiring inside and then when you're in you remove this liner as well of course and this way you can quite easily wire it up to your both tail lights Another solution, and that's the solution I'm going to use for my project. So the second is wiring up directly in the intelligence power distribution module. That's the electronical brain of the car. That's where all the cabling comes together. But um, it can be quite scary the first time. It is a cable spaghetti. Uh, it is quite sensible, of course. So you um, should take some precautions and uh, work car carefully. So before wiring up something, uh, you always should be aware of um, the amperage of the accessory that you're going to wire up. So I did the hard work for you and I uh, measured the um, amperage of the tail lights as you can see in this video. So here, here you got the IPDM, the Intelligent Power Distribution Model. So you can lift this like this and when you lift these clips on both sides you can open it with a twisting movement like this. So what I've done here, I cut it the wire 4 which serves the left hand tail light to measure the, um, the amperage. So it uh, gives 0, uh, 0.45. So now we know that the entire tail light uses only 0 0.45 amp. So the both together don't even use one complete amper. With that in mind, we now know that we can wire up safely without using a, a relay. So recall that I fed a cable through. This was the reason why. Before get wiring up, we should know what kind of power source we're going to use. Here again, um, there are multiple solutions. Tigriman used one of the DRL ports, you have the 51 and the 57. He um, bypassed one of them with an easy um, scotch lock connector. You just clip them on, wire it to your cabling that goes to the back and you're all done. As I'm going to wire up to both of the tail lights in here, um, I have to use a different approach. I will use the port 19 as a power source. That one is going to my switch. I'm feeding it back. And there it is wired up to the both right hand and left hand tail light. As you can see, it is important to use diodes as well. This is in order to separate both electrical circuits. So guys, to connect my ignition port 19 to the tail lights, port four and seven, I make this little cable uh, system. Uh, first of all, there is this one that I will connect 
with a waterproof scotch lock connector so that goes to this end from port 19 go through the diode and these are diodes you can find them um, online i bought uh, 10 of these at the local car shop for five euros you can also order them on aliexpress and those are the bastards that i waited that long for i find them order them uh, locally i um, think they look a little bit more qualitative than uh, the aliexpress ones but you could use both um, and the idea of those things is that they separate circuits so current only comes in this way so where the line is is the direction i mark them as you can see i isolated them with a little string tube but i remark them with a little white tape so current only can flow this direction but it can flow back so from port 19 it will go towards my switch in the cabin and then it comes back from the switch it goes to this one where it separates and there are two new diodes that only allow current to flow in that direction and here they can go to my tail lights these come from the board computer and feed the tail lights um, so as you can see there again the board computer can feed the tail lights but it can't go back towards the switch or the ignition so here we got a protection and an extra protection here as well so now i only have to um wire everything up in the intelligent power distribution module so i soldered everything uh even if i'm not a, a big pro but i think uh, it will give better connections but uh if you can't really solder it well you can also use solder shrink tubes that are already shown in other videos um, you could also tap directly in with uh, these kind of scotch lock connectors but um, as the tail lights are quite important i um, would recommend to go for the best connection you can find so of course you should test if uh, all the connections are well made so in order to do that you can use the old famous multimeter Put the wires like this and choose this option and as you can see now the current flows with should be the tail light and the power comes through if i switch both connectors you can see that no power is coming through so this diode does do its job i will test all the connections now so in this case again the tail light is fed but there's no power coming through Great, this day it functions well. So guys, as you recall, I did already do this installation of the cabling towards the cabin in a previous video, as you can see here above. Um, but as I changed the car, I had to redo this cabling. Um, I'm open to feedback and the feedback was to use the, um, a cable hose so that's what I did here uh, I first put a cable hose in place and then I guided the cable I directly guided two different cables the cable with the white label is for future possibilities this cable is the one I will using, be using for my cable harness you see here the cable is coming in I will attach it and here are the wires, the white, optional, and this one I'm going to use. So after a lot of fiddling, everything is in place. So as you can see here, the lowest um, tail light, this port number four, is connected to the separation. The other one, the white cable, number 17 by heart, is also connected. They both go to the originals. and this one is going to the switch and the switch is going to the connector that is hidden here so i close everything up now and we will test so exciting moment we're going to test the option the 
the light is shining here. I can see if it works. You can see that the lights are on. Today it is a little bit rainy, so I show you the difference with this DRL mod and without. So when I start the car, you can see the DRL option is on. The lights are not on, as you can see. But the back lights are. Maybe you can see the car better. And when I put this option off, you can see the back lights don't work any longer. Put the option back on, and now I turn the lights on, and as you can see, the light is working. Everything works as it should. Guys, this was it for the big DRL project. I hope you liked it. Um, please, if you liked it, leave a comment, share, um, subscribe if you wasn't subscribed yet. And if you like to copy the video in your own language, please respect the uh, YouTube license and give a big shout out to my channel. Thank you so much and see you next time. Bye bye.